When we finished part one of this two-part video, I had just finished painting the stream bed. Now the scene looks like this. Let's take a quick look at some of the steps that transpired in between. Hello, fellow modelers. It's Bruce here once again. It's uh, time to start off the uh, video for the part two of the creation of a small stream. Um, I thought I would start with a little status of where we are. Yeah, so that's the kind of uh, material that these are made out of. And you can see it really lends itself to uh, representing rock. So they're made for that. Uh, in the next part of this video, I'll swing around here and show you how I um, create the features in the face of the rock, the, the grooves and so forth. Because right now, they're smooth, like this side. So we'll do that in the next part. So I'm going to fill that in, and then I'm going to work my way up uh, with rock cliffs a bit. And uh, I'll show you what my goal is back there, and where the, the waterfall will be coming from. A modeling friend of mine, Dave Emery, um, who lives in New Hampshire, is building his own layout, uh, which has loads of uh, mountains, uh, hills, rock cuts, and so forth. And he's a uh, geology buff, and uh, when he saw um, what I was doing here, he sent me a link to a picture of the cliffs in the Wisconsin Dells. And I think you can see that okay. Now, if you look at this cliff, excuse me, on the right-hand side where it's been worn away by water, and the water from the dells goes behind here, uh, you see it kind of curves down, and that's my idea for this waterfall behind here. I'll have the cliffs extending above the waterfall on the backdrop and curve around like this, but then curve up similarly on this side. And out of the bottom of that is where I'll have the waterfall coming down to this. So I have to build those cliffs up a ways. And I will put some foliage on the top of the cliffs, much like you see uh, here. It'll be background foliage, but it will be foliage. Okay, so that uh, kind of gives you an idea of what I'm going to do along the backdrop there. And uh, I talked about the falls. Now let's just swing over a little bit to this side. And what you see on here is a raised area. Really has nothing to do with the stream, but it's going to abut the stream, so I just need to finalize my plans for this, glue it in place before I start putting the um, ceiling tiles back there for the against the backdrop. This is a strip of uh, foam board that came from my last layout. It's one of the few things I salvaged uh, from the last layout. Uh, and I've decided I'm going to put my company houses, that's what you see uh, kind of over on the right hand side there, on this raised area. The, the tracks will be coming along this level and then going across the bridge and going to the main part of the layout. So, uh, yeah, I have cut it because it used to be a bit longer. All right, this used to be on it. And uh, I've cut this end off so that it kind of matches where this, um, where the stream comes in. And I will uh, touch up this pink foam exposed with ground goop, which is what this all is. And again, the nice thing about ground goop, if you look at it, is you can put the kind of rock uh, strata and so forth in there. Um, on my old layout, I had a paved road on this section. I don't. It's not era appropriate, not appropriate to the time period. And uh, I'll just goop over everything here. And, uh, but it gives me a little section of my old layout. I'll glue that down, tidy up um, this area down here, which is a big gap and so forth, and uh, get that in place uh, really before I do much on the, uh, on the backdrop. So that's another next step, even though it's not uh, directly uh, associated with the stream. So I'll be doing that. 
And uh, as I said, in the next section, which uh, I'll be doing shortly, I will show you how I texture uh, the face of the side of this stream, which right now looks like that. So the bottom section, which I had glued in previously, I've textured, but not these two sections. So I'll show you how I do that. And you see some T-pins there. Well, when you model with foam, T-pins are your, are your friend when you want to glue something down. So uh, I had put these in to hold the ceiling tile in place. You never worry about stuff like that because it all adds to the texture. So those are in there fine and I'll be coming back and showing you in the next video exactly what to do. So I'll see you then. Okay, time for an update. Told you I wanted to add some ceiling tile cliffs at the back of uh, this stream so they'd be underneath the waterfall. So if you did look through the waterfall, you didn't see sky. <clears throat> and I needed a pretty exact measurement. You certainly can't get a ruler down at that base level down by the stream, so here's a little trick you can use. You get two pieces of wood that are shorter than the span, and you just slide them to the point where you get the measurement you want, and then clamp it with a spring clamp, and you now have uh, the length of the, the span between the, each wall here. So again, just a little trick. You don't always have to use a ruler. Alrighty, I promised you I would show you how I uh, make the cliff face. So here's those pieces that are going to go behind the, uh, the falls. And I have glued them together, so let me just get the T-pins out here. And I begin by scribing horizontal lines on the uh, face with a, a box cutter. You can use a number 11 blade. And you don't have to go too deep. And you, you just make three or four on each piece. Okay, that's step one. Step two is you get a, a dental pick. This is the one I'm using, but you could use any shape really. And now you start to widen out those holes a little bit, those uh, lines you just scribed, and make them more defined. And you don't worry if it goes a little curve up and down. If you looked at the strata, in that picture from the Dells, you see that happens in real life. Okay. Now the next step is you get yourself a, a pretty stiff toothbrush. And you just go with the grain now and start scraping through those slots you just made. If you're allergic to dust, this would be a good time to wear a mask. Heaven knows we all have a bunch of COVID masks laying around now. And I keep my vacuum cleaner right here. And there you go. If you don't like the look of it there, you just do a little bit more. But it's just scribe and then brush. The other thing that I, uh, I do once uh, Probably once it's installed would be to uh, give it a coat of 
uh, a couple of paints just to give us some variation in the color, but you've seen that before. So I think that's it for this update, and uh, we'll check back in a while. So work progresses on the stream scene, and uh, really as in any scenery work, you should always start from the backdrop and work forward. So you want to you want to get your backdrop done and then put your structures and your scenery up front. So as you can see, um, and I already did another video on how I did the uh, foliage and so forth on that backdrop, which you can check out. I'll put the link in the uh, description of this video. Um, but anyway, you can see that the backdrop has progressed. As a matter of fact, I am ready now to uh, put the waterfall from this level down to this level. I'm just waiting for one more scenery product to arrive in the mail. I think it's supposed to get here in, in about two days. So uh, at that point, I will uh, you know, do the video, show you how I'm making that waterfall. <clears throat> That's the last main element that I need. Then I can put, once the waterfall is in place, I can put some uh, scenery effects down here on the shoreline and we're ready for the bridge. Filling this gap with a photo uh, is a technique that uh, is one of the handiest ones uh, when it comes to how do you handle a stream or for that matter a road that goes into the backdrop and you want to see it continue. Now if you're an artist you can paint that continuation but if you're not an artist and I certainly am not uh, you know, if you saw my video on uh, painting the stream bed, you know I'm not an artist. Um, then you are better served by looking uh, on the internet for a photo that might uh, suffice. So, believe it or not, I simply put into the search engine streams that disappear, actually I think I said river, rivers that disappear into the distance. And it gave me dozens and dozens of photographs. And, uh, I just picked one that seemed to have, uh, you know, A, the, the color of the water that was similar, although I did adjust that a bit in my photo program. And uh, also, you know, I didn't want a cityscape in the background or some huge uh, suspension bridge. So I was lucky enough to find one that had some nice uh, mountains that were consistent with, uh, you know, what I'm working on here. And uh, yeah, just cut out that photo and and it will go in here permanently, but doesn't that look a lot better than that? Um, so yeah, um, think about using photographs as a, as a means of uh, blending the foreground and the uh, background, because uh, they do come in handy. All right, that's enough for this update. Well, I think it's time for some summary comments about the creation of the stream scene. Uh, on the Banger Slate extension of my Jersey Highlands Railroad um, and talk a little bit about the importance of having a picture in your head of what you would like the scene to look like. So from the gnome under the bridge there to the deer that's over on the other side of the stream, I had these ideas in my head. I have uh, three or four of those little gnomes around and they'll be hidden all over the layout and it's something for the younger generation to look for when they come and visit. <clears throat> this little extraneous cut in the fascia board I will fill with some uh, spackle before I paint the fascia. You see that the decision to add um, a little bit of land, a little bit of shoreline on both sides of the stream really paid off because it just added something instead of having the water go from side to side. Looking under the bridge, you see the bottom of the waterfall and then the other two smaller um, layers of, of falls that feed off of that. And if I just bring it up a little bit, you see the bridge, the falls behind it, and then the backdrop. <clears throat> In a second I will um, change the uh, height of the tripod and you can see uh, from a different angle, but there's the uh, Benger Slate uh, 060 tank engine. 
pulling a couple of cars on loan from the Jersey Highlands Railroad as a maintenance away gondola, and then um, a delivery of coal for the Benger Slate Company on this Susquehanna Coal Company gondola. So let's uh, turn this off a second so that I don't uh, get you seasick while I adjust the height of the uh, tripod and we'll make some other summary comments about the waterfall and the rest of the scene. I think from this angle you can start to get an idea of uh, what a great rail fanning uh, spot this bridge is going to be um, over the life of the model railroad here. Um, there's that Jersey Highland Railroad maintenance away gondola and the Susquehanna coal gondola. But uh, track level videos of trains going across the King Post Bridge will certainly become um, a common occurrence here uh, on the railroad. The uh, picture that we cut out to put behind the waterfalls is effective. Um, we have managed to do somewhat of a credible job of blending the foreground into the background here with that stream that runs dead into the wall. And uh, coming over a little bit to this side, you start to see the beginnings of the company store um, little scene, which is about as far as I've gone on putting any scenery in. So that's it as far as the creation of the scene for this dream. And I uh, hope you've learned a few scenery tips along the way and enjoyed watching this scene unfold. If you enjoyed the video, as always, please give it a thumbs up. And if you have not already done so, I would appreciate it if you subscribed to my Jersey Highlands Bruce YouTube channel. Talk to you again. Oh, wait a minute, I almost forgot something. What would a waterfall be without some running water sounds of a ru rushing falls? Yes, I added the sound module that uh, I've done a YouTube video on. And uh, when I have the speaker actually mounted on the fascia, you'll hear it a little bit better. There's the running water and the waterfall sound. And now I will end the video. Thanks for watching. Always be on the lookout for the gnome.